La Sema blames Banana Island building collapse and truck collision with property. Najat Biamila denies working against deputy and endorsing any candidate. Bandits kill eight in Kaduna attack. The International Organization for Migration says over 400 migrants died in the first quarter of 2023. And Thabo Pesta extradited from Tanzania to South Africa. Tonight in PHQ, I will be joined by Emmanuel Omobiko, National Coordinator, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Uriwa, and Mr. Echike Chude, a public affairs analyst based in Lagos. I am Benga Aborowa. Stay with us. Politics HQ will be right back. Nigerian ministers have been accused of what can be described as an interim government since the announcement of Ashuaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu as president-elect. The Human Rights Watch said the ministers have deployed resources and instruments of governance to the aid of the president-elect and candidate of the All Progressive Congress during the presidential election. In recent weeks, several ministers have been publicly seen defending the result of the 2023 elections, a situation that has been a cause for concern. The Minister of Information and Culture, Al-Haji Lai Mohammed, and others have all been pinpointed as agents of the incumbent government, as they have been accused of abandoning their current duties. Now, joining me on the show today to unpack this issue of a government within a government are uh, Emmanuel Ombiko, National Coordinator, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, and Achike Chude, a public affairs analyst. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me on the program. Now, I'd like to start with you, uh, Emmanuel. Can you kindly explain to our viewers what the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, is a legend regarding the existence of an interim government currently being run by three cabinet-level ministers in President Buhari's administration? First and foremost, um, election is supposed to have been over by now after the February 25th uh, contest, in as much as uh, there are still cases that are, uh, you know, that were instituted before the election tribunal, but officially election ought to have been over by now, campaign particularly ought to have been over. But we still see uh, certain individuals, especially uh, okay. cabinet level ministers who have apparently left their, you know, cabinet level positions and actually not uh, showing loyalty totally and absolutely to the government that appointed them, but are rather junketing and globetrotting, you know, um, at the behest of the president-elect who, uh, as we know it, pragmatically and uh, uh, in terms of constitutional powers, there is no place in the constitution for a president-elect to carry out any kind of uh, uh, activity on behalf of the government because he has not yet been inaugurated. He, he, will, be, he will be inaugurated on May 29th. But you already have ministers who are paid from the taxpayers' funds, junketing all over the world. Some of them, the Kayamo, the Minister of State for Labor, uh, who is still who is still uh, parading about as the spokesperson for the campaign? I don't know which campaign he is the spokesperson. Is it the campaign of uh, Bola Metinibu that has already been proclaimed as the president elect by INEC? Why is he still the uh, spokesperson of the campaign? Is campaign still going on? Now you have Kemo. You also have the minister of youths and uh, sports development, Son Bedare, and uh, first and foremost, we had. Um, I mean, we saw the Minister of Information and Culture, who was all over the place. He's still, I think, he's still in London because some of the journalists that went with him are still been, are still been uh, seen. Uh, some of them are still sending videos, are still sending uh, information from uh, London. Today, some of them were in Chatham House in London. The other time, uh, in USA, they were in New, uh, New York Times. They were all over the place, all over the international media, you know, campaigning and working for the 
president elect. And here we are. We we have been told by the security forces that there were plots to start up an interim government. And a lot of people who are learned in in um, in, in law are saying it is not possible to have an interim government when it is not provided for in the constitution. But what do you call these kinds of uh, strategic communications and uh, pro uh, I mean, a, a spread of propaganda on behalf of uh, someone that has already been proclaimed as president elect, but he does not have any office provided for by the constitution. So who is giving these ministers, about four of them, who is giving them the directive? Who has sent them to London? Who has sent them to the USA? Who has sent them to all over Europe to convert support for the APC that has already been declared as the winner? So why are they all over the world filtering taxpayers' funds, wasting our money on flight tickets, on hotels, hotel bills, and every other thing? Even a lot of this, uh, I saw one of uh, one of the special assistants, one of these special assistants uh, to the president. The president has over a hundred special assistants. One of them was cited in one of the functions in Washington, D.C. with the three ministers, Dari, um, the Minister of uh, Youth and Sports, the Kayamos, and the rest of them. You know, you begin to ask, what, what are they really doing? Who are they working for? Who is paying them? Our campaign is still going on. Totally. This is why we have concluded as Huriwa that perhaps this um, interim government that uh, the DSS told us, DSS that is actually now behaving like an arm wing of APC, told us that some certain people are planning to have interim government. It looks like the interim government is already, uh, you know, going on with the kind of activities, illegal activities that these ministers are carrying out. As God knows who is directing them, who is funding their trips, who is paying for their hotels, mm. who is paying for all these all these uh, media campaigns that are going on all over the place. And Nigerians should ask: Are we still? in the election, electionary, uh, you know, period. Thank you, Emmanuel. I'd like to bring in Achike Chiro in Lagos at this point in time. Now, Achike, this is the 23rd uh, year of our uninterrupted uh, democratic experience since 1999. We've had uh, governments uh, succeed themselves, a democratic government to another from the same party, and we've also seen uh, from one party to another. What do you make of Huriwa's uh, accusations of an interim government, a government within the government. What is the global best practices uh, for transitioning from one government to another? Because some will say, you know, there's no big deal in what is happening. They're preparing uh, the ground for taking over. And by the way, they all belong to the same party. So what do you make of all of this? description of uh, what is happening is uh, not uh, the right kind of description. This is not an interim government uh, issue. This is clearly a case of uh, abuse of uh, powers, abuse of uh, responsibility by government officials. Uh, regardless of whether the monies or the resources that are being used for this purpose comes from federal coffers or whether it comes from the candidates of uh, the APC, who has been declared by IMEC as uh, the winner of uh, the presidential election of February. You know, and I think that that is what the issue is. When you want to talk about an interim government, you're talking about a parallel government arrangement mm. uh, that would uh, also have essentially a duplication or replication of the offices that you have of the government that is on ground. And you do not have that in a, under, I mean, in any way, with even this arrangement, we have about three or four ministers are running you know, all over the world, trying to make a case uh, for the APC. Uh, so it is not you know, an interim government issue because an interim government issue, obviously, you'll be talking about mm -hmm. uh, you know, an interim you know, uh, uh, person that will run that government, an interim head of government. You're going to have you know, various cabinet you know, minist you know, ministers uh, also in the interim government and other I mean, duplications that will be taking place. So this is clearly a case of abuse of government resources or administrative resources of government and abuse of um, you know, the offices of uh, these government officials. And so if you look at, um, and, and again, this is a uh, flight against uh, the, uh, the threats, I mean, or the warning by the 
DSS about a group of people trying to set up an Italian government. Obviously, the DSS was talking about a group of people that are far removed from the APC that do not have any affiliation with the uh, ruling party, any affiliation with those who have been declared to have won the presidential election. The DSS was talking about an attempt to truncate the country's, you know, uh, uh, civil order, the country's, you know, democracy by having a parallel arrangement that is different from the arrangement that was spelled out by the results of the election as declared by the INEC. So this is a completely different, uh, you know, uh, matter. Yes, um, obviously, you must ask questions about uh, the deployment of uh, government officials mm -hmm. for purely partisan objectives. Because what is going on is that, for instance, the Minister of Information went to the United States and was making a case for the APC candidate that INEC has declared as the winner of the last presidential election. It is not his brief. He has spokesmen, you know, members of his campaign team. They, you know, they, they can decide, you know, what that, that if, if they want to continue with some level of campaign, maybe fourth election, you know, programs, they can do that. But I do not think that it is the responsibility of the minister, of the serving minister of government to go to the United States to talk about how beautiful the election has been mm -hmm. when that same election is under dispute in the court. In the so let the court decide, because that is what they told the opposition not to complain. Uh, you know, that they should go to court. So if the matter has gone to court, you know, you are now putting pressure on the opposition uh, because the opposition is criticizing a few things, you know, that uh, are going on, and you say they have no right since they have gone to court. So why would you, as a minister of state, have any right also when the matter is in court to make a case about how wonderful the election was when it is the court that is going to determine whether that election was free, fair, and credible? You know, so you see... Uh, this abuse, and I, I think that that essentially is what is going on. But in the classical case of having an interim government, we are talking about the parallel government and parallel offices of government. That is not exactly the case. Three, or four ministers who are junketing, you know, the globe, you know, in a partisan manner. Of course, it is wrong because they are ministers of the Federal Republic. They are not appointees of uh, the APC as a political party. Uh, you know, so that in itself, the activities abroad cannot uh, 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 symbolize, I mean, the running of a parallel government in the country. Thank you, Achike. Now, back to you, Emmanuel. Um, Achike just posited that, you know, what the federal ministers are doing does not constitute as a parallel uh, government. And uh, we can say what they're doing uh, amounts to abuse of power. Uh, what's your take on a Chike statement, and what evidence does your organization, Uriwa, have to support their claims that these ministers are working for the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and the all-progressive Congress instead of the current government, even though they belong to the same political party, the ruling all-progressives Congress? Uh, what, what we have said, and what is so clear, is that the office of the president-elect is not provided for in the constitution. There's no specific functions and powers that have been assigned to the, uh, the person who has been proclaimed the president elect. The, 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 um, uh, I mean, the, the analyst on, on, on this program was trying to explain what the DSS has said. I don't know where he got his uh, information from, where he works for the DSS. DSS did not tell Nigerians exactly what they meant by. The, uh, the existence of a plot by certain people to set up interim government. An interim government is not structure, structurally, uh, you know, defined as uh, uh, that, that it has to be a parallel government. It, it has to be a government set up by people who didn't take part in the election or people who don't have um, uh, uh, who don't who don't have clear briefings on what to do. Interim government could. A government no, but the definition, the definition of exactly interim government, the uh, and Nigeria has been through this situation of an interim government before. Uh, if you remember uh, the post uh, June 12 crisis, when uh, President uh, Babangida was forced to step aside, Shonekon, 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 and okay. then he appointed yeah, an ex Shonekon, you would see that yeah. they are not on the same, they're parallel governments, and they don't have the same understanding. So I believe 
uh, Mr. Chike is right within his rights to say he is uh, not correct. He's not right okay. because there's no but, there was no parallel uh, government when Shoinka was uh, was on seat. There was no parallel government. There was there was no two governments. It's a different thing when you have um, when, we, when you have opposition party setting up like what they have in Britain, whereby the the, the party that is in power, the party that controls the parliament, uh, is actually the party that runs the government, and there is a quasi uh, uh, government within government that is set up by the next. Uh, leading political party that have the largest number of uh, parliamentarians, you know, they have specific uh, offices that they have individuals that are appointed into such offices. You may not call that a parallel government or, or whatever. But interim government, interim government, the kind of interim government we are talking about is the type that you have ministers junketing all over the place. So I want to put it to you, um, Emmanuel, if you permit me to yeah. ask this question. So why is Huriwa calling this alleged interim government, in inverted uh, commas, illegal and unconstitutional? And what impact could it have yeah. on the country? Uh, you do recall that this is not the first transitional government. What is the proper uh, way to go about transitioning from one government to another that belongs to the same political party. We've seen yeah, it supposed to with, be, the people's supposed to be We've seen with the People's there's, Democratic Party in the past. Yes, there's already a transition council. These individuals that are all over the place are not members of that transition council. And then, uh, the, the uh, what, what do you call him? The other guy, the other guy, the, the SGF. SGF is supposed to coordinate the activities of this transition council. None of those guys who are all over the place, running all over the place, are actually carrying out the job of the transition council that has already been set up by the government. That is why Nigerians have to ask questions. What, is that they, what are they doing? If, if they're not actually running a government within the government, what are they doing? Who is sending them? Whose money are they using? It's quite important. The other, the other analyst said, uh, you know, apart from the issue of the, uh, uh, you know, who is paying the bills, this is a very critical question. It's a question of accountability. It's a question of transparency. Who is paying them matters so much. It matters so much to us as members of the public they need to ask questions. They need to get the right answers from these individuals who are all over the place in Washington, in Washington DC, probably flying on first class, first class tickets, going to Washington DC, going to New York, going to uh, UK uh, at, at the behest of a man that has already been proclaimed the winner of an election. What is their job other than trying to function as a quasi government within a government? That is the question Nigerians should begin to ask, and that's what we're trying to, what we're trying to tell Nigerians to ask these right questions. Okay, thank you, Emmanuel. Back to you, Chike. Uh, Nigeria concluded elections, and they are disputed. That's why uh, there's a uh, there, there's a uh, election petition tribunal uh, that is ongoing. It means the elections were disputed, and it's led to a lot of wagging of tongues in the polity. Uh, when you pick up a newspaper or listen to uh, watch television, you might think we're still in campaigning season because of how high this is. Uh, and they've also taken it outside the shores of the country, to so the international community. You did mention in your opening statement uh, that the Federal Minister of Information, Elijah Lai Mohammed, uh, was in America to do some diplomacy, you know, trying to sell the, uh, the APC government. We also had uh, Nigerian world-renowned uh, Arthur Chimamanda, uh, a DJ. She wrote a letter to, in an opinion uh, letter to President Biden, asking him to, you know, uh, talking about how uh, flawed the Nigerian electoral process is. How important is the international community in helping to validate uh, the Nigerian electoral process? And uh, what do we gain from uh, this? Is it important to have the stamp of validation on it as an independent uh, country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me just say, like I said, I I, I agree with um, what my colleague on the other side is saying. You know, even though we um, I do not agree on the terms that is used, they are talking about the interim government situation and talking about um, you know an abuse of power, government offices, mm. you know, and uh, possibly the resources of the Nigerian state. On that, we are agreed. Uh, he talks about uh, then I think what, what he was uh, trying to talk about is the setting up of a, of a shadow government, for instance, in the United Kingdom by the opposition party. That is different from a parallel government or an interim government arrangement and all that. You know, but beyond that, again, you talk about uh, the international the role of and duties of uh, 
the international community. Of course, the international community is very much engaged in the election. After all, they were part of this election. And some of uh, the governments, of course, there were you know, some international uh, organizations that uh, observed the elections in Nigeria. You had the European Union, you had the NRI, you had the IRI, uh, you know, Republican Institute, the Democratic Institute, you had the ECOWAS, uh, you had uh, some other, you know, African Union and all that. So all of these things are important because uh, it has long been established that the world is a global village. And so we are interdependent in one another. And the reason why countries have to also watch out for other countries is that um, there's a synergy and there's, uh, you know, it's a relationship among nation states. And so when you do not, you do not, you allow, you know, certain, you know, things to happen in a particular state, it has the capacity, has the potential to affect others. So if this is negative, for instance, you're talking about uh, maybe misgovernment, you're talking about um, uh, maybe terrorist issues and the rest, the international community is affected. So mm -hmm. from the very beginning, it has been decided, you know, uh, uh, I think generally decided that, you know, that good governance is one way of ensuring that nation states are governed in the right manner. And then once some of these, these states are governed in the right manner, and there's a good ordering of society, then uh, you, you can be sure that the rest of the international community do not have to bother about crisis that might be generated as a, as a result of misgovernance in a particular country. And so that's why countries are showing interest when elections take place, to ensure that uh, those who have signed into, you know, have an agreement on how elections should be conducted, because there are generally accepted, you know, standards for the conduct of elections, to ensure that nation states are in line with the documents that they signed to ensure that elections that they organize are seemingly free, fair, and credible. So, and that's why so much money is being budgeted by the international community, especially the richer, you know, countries of the West. Uh, we are told that, I think, is it the United States or so, spent as much as $5 million that they gave to IMEC for the purpose of voter, you know, enlightenment, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, uh, awareness. You also have um, other international organizations under the United Nations, under the British government, all of them also funding a lot of activities, especially local NGOs in the country to ensure that the process of elections are closely monitored. The issue of, uh, for instance, uh, the, the Electoral Act would not have been possible without the input of the international community who are working with the international NGOs, who are working with local NGOs, to ensure that certain things, you know, in the process of elections are put in place, like the Electoral Act, for instance, like the issue of uh, the agreement to use rivers and so many other mm -hmm. things that have gone on. You know, the international community is interested. And so, uh, uh, when, and that's why it is not as if uh, um, the government is not aware, because government needs validation uh, for elections that take place. They want to give the impression that the elections you know, we are well conducted because ultimately, if elections, you know, are not well conducted, there are consequences. And part of these consequences might be that some of these countries that have always given support uh, to those countries who have organized elections can be sanctioned by ensuring, you know, and, and you know the implication of sanctions. And these sanctions can. Yeah, but GK, okay, if be, I could you know, interrupt economic. you, the so United States. So I think it yes. is critical for the validation of the international community. And that's why the government is worried, because we all know what happened with this election. This election, on the basis, at least of the report by observers, was one of the worst elections, in fact, and in my own estimation, because I'm an election observer, in the history of this country, it's, it's the worst election, even worse than that of 19, 2003 and 1983, I mean, according to so many other people. And so the government now finds itself in a very difficult situation with the president who has who promised the international community that under his watch, Nigeria would organize one of the best elections ever. He said it in his last outing at the General Council, you know, of the United Nations, sorry, the General Assembly. He said it when he was talking to his peers, you know, at, at ECOWAS. But what have we done? A total abdication from the promise that he made to the international community. So it is critical for them to seek validation. But unfortunately, whatever they say, some of these international organizations have gone back to their countries and have given you know, a report of what they feel happened in the election. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the junketing by the Minister of, of Information and the rest, 
what happened out there is already known by everybody, including the international community. Okay, thank you, uh, Chico. Five places to go on a break. When we return on um, politics headquarters, we will continue our discussion on the allegations of a government within a government uh, by the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. Who we were. Do stay with us. We'll be right back after this timeout. You're welcome back to Politics Headquarters and News Central Television, and we're still discussing the issue of a government within a government, as alleged by the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. And my guest is still uh, with us alive. We have Imano Onbiko, a national coordinator of Huriwa, and Achike Chure, public affairs analyst, who's in Lagos. Now, uh, back to you, Imano. Your organization has made these allegations. Uh, has there been any response for the government? And what's the next line of action that your uh, organization will be taking? We have always been saying that um, the, the positions that have often been adopted by some of these security forces are actually not in tandem with the specifications of their duties as security forces. They are showing some kind of uh, divided, uh, you know, loyalty, uh, loyalty that they have for a different kind of, um, uh, you know, you know uh, I mean, the person who already has been proclaimed as the winner of the election. So it seems the DSS and the rest of them, everybody is just, uh, you know, seeking, uh, trying to be very relevant, maybe trying to retain their offices or, you know, something like that. And they're not actually, they're not actually, uh, adhering strictly to the rule of law and they're not abiding by the provisions of the constitution the best we can do as a civil rights organization that is in place at a time where you have very limited uh spaces limited opportunities of hearing your opinions or taking certain strategic uh civil society led uh, you know actions like maybe litigations going to court and the rest of them some of these, some of these um, uh, actions that we usually take, like litigation, is somehow no longer valuable because even when you go to court, it takes a very long process for the court to adjudicate on such matters. And many a times, most of these judges are not inclined to actually granting uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, those uh, litigants the opportunity to tell their stories. Most times, the judges often fall back to the issue of, um, uh, you know, local standard and the rest of them, those technical kind of uh, uh, incumbrances to mm. try to take away some of these, uh, you know, litigation, some of these, uh, you know, cases that are supposed to be um, litigated upon in the court of law. So the opportunities for uh, saying what we want to say is actually very much limited. It limited maybe to media campaigns. And trying to enlighten Nigerians, trying to uh, uh, create awareness on the part of Nigerians that they have the responsibility to demand accountability from the government. This is the government that the people have set up. Because without that kind of legitimacy being donated to those who are ministers and who are working under this uh, federal government of Nigeria, without the legitimacy of the voters that have given uh, them the mandate to exercise authority, they don't have the right to be called government officials. So the participation mm. of... Hello, Imano, are you there? Okay, we seem to have some communication issues uh, with Imano. Now, Chike, I'd like you to jump in at this point. What kind of media and strategic communications efforts are these ministers and presidential assistants supposedly engage in on behalf of the president-elect? What sort of messages are they conveying? And do you think they should have resigned their positions as ministers of the Federation uh, of, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria if they're going to engage uh, in, in, in roles of a spokesperson uh, for President-elect who's yet to be sworn in? Well, you know, sometimes when you talk about um, the activities of um, some of these uh, government officials, you tend to have the impression that uh, we have a spear point in one point. 
across you know the length and breadth of uh, the federal administration and that's where the country is not working that's where the country has not worked for the past eight years uh, that's why we have not had effective governance that's why we have not been been able to do much with regards to providing adequate security for the citizens of this country that's why we have not been able to resolve some of the economic contradictions of uh, you know of our people that uh, has put them in a very difficult economic situation it's also why a corruption has gone on adequately because you what we seem or we seem to have had you know a government that has been floating you know from one uh, place to the other without actually achieving uh, much and so you can see for instance you talked about the fact that and you know the thing about this election and that's why a lot of people are running for political force we have never had an election like this election especially a presidential election in where we are a winner is, for instance you know acknowledged by the INS and you do not have celebration all over the country but that's not even the issue because i mean the, the celebration does not legitimize or delegitimize mm -hmm. you know if a, a, a person that is said to have won an election but you have the impression with what we have been seeing everywhere social media you know and conventional media the big bats at uh, the accusation of cancer accusation you have the impression that um, you know that, that the politics to stay on you don't have the impression that look somebody has already been elected yes and he's a president elect and that what they should be doing is to ensure that i mean that that they to begin to prepare who was may 29th uh, for installation regardless of what is happening at the supreme court you know but it's like the politics is still going on it's like the people who have won are still trying to legitimize their win I mean, you, you know, and so this this is the strange thing that is happening. And you see these ministers, you know, official, you know, ministers being involved in the back and forth, being involved, you know, in the drama, in the dispute, you know, between uh, those who have won and those who did not win or who, you know, lost the election. And that tells you that there is something, you know, uh, about this election that took place and that the dust has really not settled. So we hope ultimately at the end of the day that by the time the Supreme Court, you know, makes a ruling, that it is going to be a ruling that will be in tandem with the general, you know, feeling or the general mood of Nigerians that justice has especially, you know, been done. But with regards to some of these ministers you are talking about, they are not adding any value to the discussion. All they do, and they have not shown, you know, that they are good, you know, uh, that, uh, that they are good in terms of, I mean, uh, at communication, you, you know, and so, there is this confusing rhetoric that comes from them here and there, and 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 they end up sliding into or doing the same thing that they accuse the opposition of doing. That is being involved in countless accusations and abuses, you know, of of citizens, uh, you know, and so that in itself doesn't show that uh, they understand what strategic communication, you know, is all about. It's this is just the same old politics that led to the election itself, and after the election. We are still having the same, you know, politics filled with bad blood. Not the kind of, you know, discussion that is aimed at moving the country forward. Let the opposition cry foul if they want to cry foul. But you begin the process of winding down, you know, your administration and make sure that you are communicating the right kind of things uh, to Nigerians. Uh, but that, unfortunately, is not being done. Thank you, HK. Now, Emmanuel, why is your organization, Hiriwa, specifically calling on the ministers of sports information labor and productivity and the minister of state to resign and what impact will the resignation have on the current government no i i i, th I think it's um, it's just deleted i mean to ask them to they're not going so, to, sorry to HK, that question to, is directed to Emmanuel. yes oh, oh, okay I, I think the reason why they have to resign is because they have divided loyalty. They are not uh, loyal to the appointing authority that has put them there. And I want to even recall a statement that was uh, uh, said to have been made by the former national chairman of APC, who said that as soon as the election is over, as soon as the president elect emerges, that the sitting, sitting president becomes like a sitting dog, like someone who doesn't have any power any, any longer. Oshimolu was said to have made that statement. And that seems to be what is playing out with most of these uh, job seekers. I call these guys uh, who are actually holding cabinet level appointments, uh, who are actually struggling to be recognized and be reappointed again. They're just job seekers. 
And uh, what, what they need to resign is that let them resign and go back, go back to their homes or go back to their offices and do proper lobbying on their own, using their own finances, using their own time, using their own resources. They cannot be but, using but, the public funds, the public time. Uh, you know, as a minister of information, uh, you know, you didn't tell us who has sent you to Washington, D.C., why you have to go to Washington, D.C., why you have to go to New York, why you have to go to uh, London and spend days, you know, uh, trying to uh, defend an election that is already in the court of law is like, uh, you know, trying to not just abuse the process, but trying to just tell the world that they don't have respect for the courts constituted, uh, um, you, know, you know, judicial forum. They don't have the faith that the court is going to adjudicate properly. So they have to resign if they don't have the faith that the court is capable of handling this litigation in as much as they are all over the place trying to counter uh, whatever, whatever has been done in terms of uh, uh, the filing of cases by those, uh, uh, is it two or three? Now, Iman, Emmanuel, if you permit me to interrupt you at this point, yes. there are those that posit that government is a continuum and these individuals also belong to the same ruling party, the All Progressive Congress. We've seen a situation in the past where a new government comes in and they take forever to name uh, cabinet ministers. Don't you think uh, they're putting things on the ground to ensure uh, a smooth transition or is just, or these guys are just fighting uh, for the individual not, political careers? Yeah, the, 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 the offices of cabinet level ministers is not their bad right. By the way, every state is entitled to one, one, uh, one, one person to be appointed as a representative of that state. Mm -hmm. This is Kemo, who is Minister of State, and the rest of them, like Mohammed, who comes from uh, Kwara State, and uh, the other guy from Ibadan, Sunday Dare, and the rest of them that are all over the place looking for a job, are just doing that for their own personal and selfish uh, you know, ambitions. They're not being sent by their states. They, they, ought to be, they ought to be representatives of the state. They, it's not their birthright to be ministers. It is not their right that they have to be appointed as ministers in order for us to have a seamless kind of transition. No, there's already a transition council in place, and the president elect is not somebody of maybe 15 years or 20 years or 25 years experience in politics. Somebody that has been there in politics for, for years, somebody that has gone all over the country, that must have made friends, that have had uh, networks all over the place. So he doesn't need anybody to be jumping all over the place looking for a job. If you want to look for a job, then drop the one you already uh, been paid from the taxpayer because you are not actually doing the job that you have been paid for and campaigns are over. You are not doing any post-election campaign. There's no post-election campaign. The moment campaigns are over, they are over until the court or even if the court eventually orders for uh, maybe a by-election or whatever, then they cannot decide to do whatever they want to do. But for now, election of the office of president has come to a conclusion. There has no longer any, any reason for anybody to be spending the campaign council's money, not the taxpayer, but this time around, they are spending the money belonging to you and I. That's the question we're trying to ask. Why would you spend public funds trying to defend an election of a president-elect who does not have any constitutional office, powers, and functions? So it is even beyond Section 15.5 or whatever. I think Section 15.5 is about abuse of office. It's much more tragic much more damaging than that. It's something that is, that is completely, completely unconstitutional, something completely illegal. It's something that is trying, okay. apart from the fact that they're actually looking for jobs, they're also trying to tell the sitting president that they have already, they're no longer loyal to him. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, now, Chike, we have a situation uh, where uh, the last uh, speaker, Emmanuel, alleged that you know, once a president is elected, once you have a president elect, it almost seems like the government folds its arms, the current government, and, you know, just sit back and relax. And all this politicking is happening. Just yesterday in the National Assembly, uh, there was a probe as to uh, the whistleblower policy, which is very important and crucial. Uh, but the point is, about 80% of the members of the Ninth Assembly uh, will not be returning to the Senate. So how do we ensure that uh, government is really a continuum and uh, we don't feel a void in between the transitional period and when a president is elected? What are the implications of this period uh, to how uh, government is run? Hello, Chika, are you there? Yes, I'm not. 
Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Did you get my question? Yes, I think I did. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Look, please. our politicians are not are not known for responsibility. Our politicians are not responsible. You know, and uh, and that's why a country that has been blessed with so much in terms of uh, human and natural resources continue to wallow in poverty. Uh, with uh, the vast majority of uh, Nigerians at the slightest, you know, opportunity want to leave this country because we've had it very bad. I mean, in terms of uh, political leadership. And so these are the people that are struggling our political space in the country. And uh, obviously, the president became a lame, a lame dog a very long time ago. It's not just even before the, the, the elections itself. Even at the best of time, you had a president that is not there, is that is always not there. And when things tend to happen in this country, especially at critical moments, issues of insecurity that try our soul as a nation, the president is usually not around. And then you're talking about uh, the period shortly before the election and the period after the election. Nothing is happening, nothing is happening, you know, in government. You know, but what worries me really is that uh, as we go into the, you know, uh, twilight, you know, of uh, this administration, when it comes to, you know, proper aspect of governance, at least that we usher in us into the new administration, you're not seeing it. But you're seeing government officials embarking on massive expenses at this particular point in time, when all they need to be doing is to ensure that, uh, you know, every major expense right now mm -hmm. at this particular point in time is kept in abeyance uh, for the, you know, uh, new government to uh, reevaluate what these expenses are for. For instance, in the past two weeks, we have been told about uh, the, the Federal Aviation Authority wanting to spend about 28 billion you know, Naira for the purpose of uh, uh, ensuring, um, you know, Wi-Fi services in all the nation's airports and in the markets in this country. Markets, open markets, Wi-Fi services, you know, and then again, after that, I think there was... The uh, truck, the buying of the two, trucks for a billion... Uh, 12, 12 billion Naira yeah. or so that was supposed to be used for to acquire, you know, fire fire trucks, you know, for, for the airports. Yes, you can say that that was ordered a, a long time ago. But then again, you have another, I did over $700 million that are from the International Monetary Fund uh, for the purpose of uh, subsidizing uh, the, uh, the incoming uh, 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 removal of first subsidy in the country. And they are telling us that 50 million Nigerians are going to be given money by this present administration or by the incoming administration. So, what is strikes me when you consider all of this is that, yes, Actual governance is not taking place. But when it comes to expenses, monies, being budgeted for activities, these activities are going on vigorously with government officials trying to ensure that they can lay hands on huge amounts of money for the purpose of expending this money just a few weeks before they leave office. So what the pressure I have is that this is they are embarking on a clean out exercise. They want to take as much as they can. Of course, the issue of corruption has remained endemic in this country. So when I suppose that it has to do, you know, the, 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 all of these budgets you are talking about have to do with corruption, I might not be too far off the map. This is, this is, like I said, the twilight of this administration. By now, every major expenses officially at the level of, you know, governance would have been halted by a president that is aware of his duty and responsibility and begin to ask for handover notes from all of his ministers. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is even taking place. You know, so I, I'll be surprised if I'm told later that many of these ministers I did hand over notes yeah, for the ministries and all that. You know, so I, I, but I'm not surprised about this because in the past seven years, past seven years, going to eight, almost eight years now, we have not had any serious form of effective governance. And so to ask them, you know, to make sure that all of these things are done, the form is with tonight's the handover is asking too much of a government that has failed continually you know, for the past mm. eight years to begin to do what is right in the twilight of uh, the, uh, this administration. Okay. Thank you, Chike. Now, Emmanuel, as we begin to wrap up our conversation on politics headquarters tonight, what steps should be taken by the Nigerian government to address these allegations and restore public confidence in the democratic process? And what impact might these allegations have on the upcoming presidential inauguration and the stability of Nigeria's democratic institutions. Of Nigerians that, um, uh, of course, the, the popular expectation that uh, the courts will uh, 
uh, adjudicate the, 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 the cases before them uh, expeditiously is not going to be met. It's not going to be met because the court, the court may take a longer period of time to finish up at the level of uh, election tribunal before it gets to the Supreme Court, and it may spend like three months or so, and then the government would have come into office, the government that the opposition parties are trying to trying to stop from being sworn in by legal means are already in court, and uh, I mean are already in place as a government, and then there is a lot of pressure from the executive arm of government, you know, that, that, will, be, that, will, be, that will be upon the judiciary not to actually exercise their powers independently. So it's going to be quite uh, a, a tough time. I think what Nigerians should be asking, just like what uh, the analysts on the other side has said, he, is, he has said the right things. Uh, the question of corruption is a very big burden on all of us. And unfortunately, the two anti-corruption bodies that we have in place have actually not carried, their, uh, carried out their responsibilities independently as much as they can and, and as much as they should. Because if you ask me, this Ministry for uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management have made a lot of claims of heavy figures, humongous amounts of money that have been put into so many things, phantom projects that nobody is actually asking questions. It looks like once you are a cabinet level minister or once you are very close to the powers that be in Abuja, you are you are you are you are you are more powerful than even the chairman of EFCC. Nobody nobody's gonna ask you any question. For instance, why will a minister tell Nigerians that she spent six point two or three billion naira to train to train uh, phone repairers, people that repair phones in Bauchi? Bauchi, the people alone, the people, the entire uh, population that you have in Bauchi that have that have phones, their phones will not be more than two billion naira worth. The entire phones that you have in Bauchi being used by people apart from the one the governors and the, the officials are using. So how are you spending six billion naira to train youth on how to repair phones? This statement was made around August last year. Mm -hmm. Nobody's even asking any question. The other time they told us they spent about a billion naira to feed school children during the lockdown. You begin to ask questions. Which school children did you feed? Where were the school children when schools were not on? Mm -hmm. Where did you find the pupils? Where did you find these uh, pupils who most of them have already been taken out of their, their stations. Some of them have traveled out of Abuja, traveled out of Lagos, most of them even traveled abroad, and you are telling Nigerians that you are you're spending so much amount of money to feed school children. So, so many claims that have been made by these ministers. What we need to do is to make it a point of daily duty to mount pressure on the government that is coming in, if they really want to govern this country properly. We need a forensic kind of uh, inquisition, very extensive, Financial and forensic investigation of these ministers is not something the EFCC can do alone. It's something that is even beyond EFCC because the amount of the quantum of cash that have been cutted away by most of these appointees, you will need something that is quite massive in terms of investigation, and you need the kind of expertise that you can get from all, all over the world because the kind of money that is already in in the hands of individuals that is why they can afford not to be obedient and loyal okay. to the president. And the president thank you, is always thank you very about, much. Uh, sorry, we have fast run out of time, Emmanuel. I'd like to say yes. a big thank you to you gentlemen. Emmanuel Onbiko, National Coordinator, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, and Achike Chudo, Public Affairs Analyst, who joined from Lagos. I do appreciate your insights and your contribution to the program uh, this night. Thank you. Thank you.